This video is to be uploaded on June the 23rd, the 24th, no later than the 25th, Lord willing, of 2024, 2024. This is Angelo Quinones, and you reach I Am Ministries. I Am Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. The Bible, by the way, Habeblas, post by E. Kalinita. Good night, but that's too premature. <laughs> okay, great. That's just the deal. Post by E means how's it going. Yasas means hello in, in a formal way. And Yasu means hello in an informal way to your buddies and pals because that's what they deserve sometimes. You know what I'm saying? That's all they the only greeting they deserve. <laughs> Some of them anyway. I have my special child out of the vein with me. And she's a special child, um, like I said before, and she's almost five years old. Hi, Han. <laughs> Hi, my love. She said, hmm, I don't know if you heard that. I have the fan going on here in the Philippines. I relocated to my chagrin for the United States of America almost 2,000 years ago. It feels like that. I mean, it's six years ago, but it's like, it's like, it's like 2,000 years. This is the deal. Now, um, let's pray for the study, uh, the Anastasis uh, series, and I don't know if I can finish it because, like I said, I have my, my special child with me, and then my uh, son, Sean Donnelly, with his mother, is on their way back, okay? So I hope they stay a couple of hours over there in his grandmother's house. That's just a deal. That's just it. Now, um, he's two years old, by the way. He's going to be two in, 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 uh, in about ten days. Or so, oh Holy Father, merciful God, and and you know I just praise Your Holy Name because it is great and You are great. And in me relocating for the United States of America to over here to the Philippines might have saved my life. And uh, that's when the virus uh, uh, broke out, and and. Um, so I, 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 you know, I know that I'm here because of the children, and I did get married, and so I just praise you for your power, your, your wisdom, and your 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 understanding, your counsels, everything about you staggers the mind, and so um, I just praise you for that, and I, I I confess my sins freely to you, and I just pray that you may cleanse me of these sins by the precious blood of Jesus and through His resurrection by his resurrection um, from the dead that justified us. And so I just thank you for all spiritual and physical things, and I pray for power, for boldness, for clarity, for assuredness, and for a recollection of these, these, these deep truths and the language that I'm dealing with here, Father. So I just uh, pray for the peace of Israel and for the Kirk, for the church, and protect her and uh, Yisrael in this time of war. In Jesus' name, well, guys, this is the Cruz de Gras, <coughs> and it's the key. Right, my love? Hi, Anne, I love you. I love you. <laughs> it's just a deal. I love her so much, you know. And that's just, but we got to love God even more. That's just a deal. He comes first. That's just, that's just it. Now, we're dealing with the resurrection of Jesus. Which is the capstone of Christianity, remove it and <laughs> all those crumbles. It is the singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan religions of the world. End quote. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. I mean, you know, without the resurrection, there is no crucifixion applied to us. There's nothing that nothing works without the resurrection. The resurrection is the capstone of Christianity, and it makes everything else complete. Hi, my love. And so that's just the deal. And so um, the bodily resurrection of Jesus has to be believed in. We have to believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. We have to believe it in our heart. In Greek word, karabia. In our heart. In the, my, in, the, in the innermost center core of our very existence and being, we have to trust and believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know what I'm saying? Anastasis is the Greek word that we're studying. You know, among that, <coughs> and and with, with that, okay, there are other Greek words that that accompany the study. Egero, that means um, I raise. 
in different constructions. The perfect tense, the aorist tense, I mean, I just had uh, aorist passive, I mean, uh, the, 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 the present tense. I mean, all these constructions are found and recorded in the New Testament. We looked at the Synoptic Gospels, we looked at the Book of Revelation, we looked at Romans, we looked at Process the Apostle of the Actually and Basils, we looked at First uh, Peter uh, chapter 3, First John chapter 1, verse 1, First John chapter 1, verse 1. I mean, we looked at Galatians 1, 1. We looked at, I mean, we looked at I mean, the infinitive found and recorded in chapter 20 of John's Gospel in verse 9. Huh? Anastani from Anastami. I mean, all of it. The bodily resurrection. That in the same birthday suit that Jesus had at Bethlehem, that he took at Bethlehem, it's the same birthday suit or body, Greek or Soma or Sarks, you know, whatever, whatever you pick your choice. Uh, basar in, in Hebrew, or is the same body that was raised from the dead. It wasn't another body given to him. He didn't produce another uh, body or another farm. No, he was raised. Hi, hon, my love. Love you. Mwah. He was raised in that body, in that birthday suit. And the only time he didn't have that birthday suit, the continuous birthday suit, was before the incarnation. You understand? And during the three days and three nights that he was preaching in Shield. He was preaching in Shiel. Ekerux in there is the AIA Aris indicative uh, active uh, construction. You understand what I'm saying? The Sigma Epsilon, you know, the, the Ahmed, you know, Epsilon. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. Well, let's look at this. It took me a while to find this in, the, in Philippians. I said, maybe it's not going to be found here. Uh, be good, girl, my love. That Jesus. Jesus. Be good, girl, to daddy. Now, it took me a, a, some time to find it in the book of Philippians, a chapter 1, a chapter 2, and I finally found it in chapter 3, and in the middle, in the middle of the chapter. Now, uh, 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 let me, let me, let me check her. Well, let's read it from Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And the Apostle Paul is speaking, Paulas in Greek. That I may know, okay, may know, him and the power, and that's dunamis, the power of his resurrection, anast uh, uh, you know, anastasis, and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. Again. Again, verse 10, chapter 3 of Philippians. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, meaning of Christ's suffering, being conformed to his death. Being conformed, being shaped to his death. Let us not forget, excuse me, the death of Jesus. We're concentrating on the resurrection because a lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people don't even believe in the death of Jesus. That, 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 listen, that it was a substitutionary atonement work upon the cross. The Muslims don't believe that. They don't believe in the Adamic nature. They don't believe that the, the sin of Adam passed to all of the humanity. They don't even believe that. Forget about that they say, say not Trinity, even though they say something strange in the Quran, that uh, they created this and they created that. Well, where's, the, where's the they coming from if you don't believe in the Trinity? But that's just the inconsistency of the Quran. But getting back to this, well, some people don't believe in the death of Jesus. Without the death of Jesus, there's no resurrection. Without the resurrection, there's no death of Jesus. Practically speaking, there's no there's no death of Jesus. Practically speaking, you are yet in your sins, says the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. You understand? So that's just a deal. Uh, so over we hear that I may know that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Well, let's look at the Greek. 
Okay. Let's look at it. Now, there's a lot of infinitives. There's a lot of infinitives in the book of Philippians. If you want to study the infinitives, which is a verbal noun, you know what I'm saying? If you want to check that out, well, you know, just look at Philippians. That's the, you know, to, to, you know, uh, to be absent with the bodies, to be present with the Lord. I mean, you know, um, and all of these things. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Now, let's just look at the Greek here. Record it. You know what I'm saying? And that's just a deal. Now, it says over here in uh, Philippians, it got a, it has a P over there. That's a very bad defect. I mean, have a PH and then at least a chapter. I mean, it's, but anyway, you know, what are you going to do? It has over here, too. Now, that, that might belong uh, to... Um, that might be long. That article may go with the infinitives. There are articles that goes with infinitives, okay? Which is not strange at all, okay? Not all um, infinitives are created equal. So, not, not, you know, it's not like that all the time that an article, you're going to see an article before an infinitive. That, that, that could be your friend, like Mount says. I mean, so the article is your friend. Hello. Hello. She didn't go to sleep. She was crying. Uh, I had to give her milk. Where's the baby? Oh, here's my son. I have to do this in the morning where everybody's asleep. Okay? He's going to sleep, huh, Mala? Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to make a part two. Hold on, hold on, Mala. I'm going to make a part two. So uh, I'll do this in the morning when everybody's sleeping. <laughs> Get his dad. All right? So uh, uh, stay tuned for part two of the Anastasis series, the resurrection, the bodily resurrection of Jesus series. Okay? So Matika Anastasis tu Yesu Christu Kuriu Hemon. Okay. Okay, guys. So welcome to part two. And I'm in, and I'm in a different room, and uh, my baby's sleeping. My wife is watching television, and uh, my baby Anna. She's still awake, but she's more calmer now. I had to give her milk. That's what that was the problem. And I was confused because actually, when she eats food, you know, via the bottle, she usually doesn't drink any more milk. Um, so. Uh, so that's the deal. I had a, a, you know, day before Father's Day. That's the that's the life of a father. You learn something every day. All right. So she's okay. She's fine. So let's re let's read this again in English. Even though the interlinear has uh, English in it, but I call it broken rhythm. Let's read it again. It says over here, and let me just continuously pray. So I guess that's a participle. I don't know something like that. I don't know. So that's just the deal. Um. Father, I just pray for a uh, continual blessing and power and a recollection of things and a smoothness and it's just a, a control, a controlled um, way of, uh, of studying that may edify the saints and uh, people yet to be born in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, guys, let's try to do this part two. It says that I may know, that I may know him, meaning know uh, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, Greek word anastasis, and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. Well, let's look at the Greek again. Okay. That's just a deal. She's over there in the other room, but her mother is there. So she's not alone. So don't worry about it. Now this is an articular. This is an articular infinitive over here. Okay, to know, and uh, an, an infinitive is a verbal noun. It's an infinite noun. Okay, and it works so some tidally, and so that's just the deal. To eat, to drink, to sleep, to think, those are infinitives in English. Okay. Now in Greek it says over here, uh, gano. Nai, Ganonai, Tu Ganonai. Now the Nai is an infinitive morphine. Okay, this is an aorist infinitive active. Okay, so the so the morphine, okay, is in the active active side of the paradigm. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? I didn't take a picture of the paradigm. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come with an appendix, Lord willing, and I'm gonna show you. Okay, the the graphics that have to do with this particular study. So we know that nigh has to be looked at in the appendix. So that, I'll do that in the appendix. 
Now, uh, uh, gamma, nu, now this is called ni, omega with the circumflex, nu, alpha, iota. Okay, so the ni is an infinitive morphine. It's what shapes, it's what puts this, okay, it's, it's what's shaping this in, into an infinitive. It's very hard to study with my, with my baby acting up. So please forgive me. Him, to know him. Okay, so the translation over here, to know him, meaning Jesus, Altan. It's from the Altas paradigm, it's an accusative singular construction, Altan. Daddy, she my love, be good girl. Be good girl, my love. Altan, Alpha, Upsilon, now they call Isilon, Tau, now they call tough, like I'm tough, man. Omicron nowadays called Omicron and Nu. Nowadays is a very lazy way of saying modern Greek. And translating Kai, you understand? It'll be uh, Va or Wa in Hebrew. The Pawa. Okay, it says over here. So, uh, and. Okay, the power, ten. So we know that's from the accusative side of the paradigm, tan, ten, ta, like uh, ten, theon in uh, Praxis of Barcelona, actually, the apostles. We're talking about that false goddess. You understand what I'm saying? Not that's just a true one, but the false goddess, okay, Artemis. You see, ten, theon, theon with an alpha. Okay, so you see that article ten there. So this is feminine singular, accusative. You understand what I'm saying? Tain the uh, the do namin do namin or do namin the power the power of what well the power of the resurrection taste is the genitive okay uh, uh, article here taste like taste gaze you understand and that's just the deal resurrection ana Sta se os. Anasta se os. And we'll look at the construction in a second. <clears throat> uh, articles taste one of 24 articles in the article paradigm. Okay, two taste two, that side. Res singular. Resurrection. Ana is a preposition here. Okay, and then sta se os. Okay, has the the meaning of stand or, or rise or whatever the case may be. Okay, uh, alpha nu alpha, a uh, sigma tau alpha with the acute marker, sigma epsilon omega sigma, final sigma, uh, by the way. Okay, a uh, sophite, Greek letter, if you will, that has to do with being the uh, being the letter that goes to the end of a, a Greek word only to the, toward the end to the end. Anasta seos, resurrection. Now, this is a very critical word in our series, anastasis, because this word, along with egero, are the key, are the two key words, okay, that have to do with the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Now, the other one is necron. There's no doubt about that, because it, it talks about where Jesus was located in the three days and three nights. And that was in the hot Greek word cardia, uh, verse 40 of chapter 12 of Matthew, of uh, the lower regions, okay, of the earth. And so that's just the deal. And that's how Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 9. <clears throat> okay, so this word is absolutely essential. And the other one is zone, or zoan. Zo, that has to do with life. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's critical. So, but but this is uh, uh, like either top one or top two, number one or number two in the in the in the list of the most important Greek words that have to do with the resurrection of Jesus bodily. By the way, okay, the other one is a ghetto. You see it as a liquid future in John chapter two verse nineteen. You see it as an aorist passive in the Synoptic Gospels in each of the resurrection chapters verse six. You see it all over the place in the Acts of the Apostles, all over the place, <laughs> absolutely peppered. Okay, with the resurrection of Jesus, which is the capstone of, uh, capstone of Christianity. Okay, so teis ana, anastaseos, okay, resurrection. Very key, remember that word. Now, this is tagged by uh, 386, the other Greek word, 
okay, it is a verb, this one is a noun, is tagged by 1453. Okay, so just have those in your mind. And it has to do with Strong's, uh, this number. Of him, meaning his resurrection. Of his or of him or whatever the case may be, of tu. That's in a genitive case construction. Greek word N, I mean Kai, <laughs> and translating that. The fellowship. Okay. Now, Tain is in brackets, so it's probably not in the manuscripts. It's in probably in some. I mean, look at, um, as I almost put my magnifier in glass and my police whistle in my hot chocolate. That would be nice. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> so, look at, um, when you look at, let me see the book over here that we're studying, um, uh, P for Philippians. Look at Philippians, um, New Testament Greek manuscripts, uh, edited and arranged by Reuben Swanson and was forwarded by the great Greek scholar Bruce and Metzka. He forwarded uh, the, the uh, work. And it's all in Greek, meaning uh, the verses. Okay, the variant readings are all in Greek. Okay, so that's just the deal. I don't. I don't think I have Philippians back home in the United States. I, I had um, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Acts of the Apostles, Romans, First Corinthians. I don't think I had Second Corinthians. I had Galatians, and I might have an. I have, might have had another book or, or two or something like that. But I think you can still st still get some of them on Amazon. And I'm gonna run, okay, like the running of the bulls, okay, to see if I can get some before they're all gone. Uh, the <coughs> tain, um, fellowship, and that's a koinonian. Koinonian, that's, I mean, regular word for fellowship in the Greek New Testament, koinonian. Spell kappa. Um, it, doesn't it sound like my name? Koino, uh, quinones, almost like that, you know, almost like that. There's no Q in Greek. You know, a Q, uh, there's a K sounding letter, but it's no Q. There's a Q, uh, which is the cough in Hebrew, and a K, uh, cough. But there's no Q in Greek, though. You know, something that's just translated a Q. Kappa, Omicron, nowadays called Omicron, Iota, Nu, Omega, Nu, Iota, with the acute marker, Alpha, and Nu. Oinonian. Fellowship. That's a noun. Accusative, um, accusative uh, feminine singular. And you know what the accusative case does? Is the case a limitation like the genitive but? The genitive uh, limits as to kind. The accusative case limits as to extent. The extent of the hearing. You understand? The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 9. They didn't understand the voice. Not that they didn't hear it. They didn't understand it. The extent of the hearing, okay, was the problem uh, for the people that, that that was with the Apostle uh, Paul. Or uh, saw, uh, soon to become Paul. You understand what I'm saying? Fellowship. Koinonian. Koinonian. And that's just the deal. Now, why did Saul become Paul? Who renamed him? Uh, Jesus? The first three years? Or, or at Jerusalem? Or when he saw James? Or whatever the case. It, the, the Bible doesn't say when he was renamed. But he was definitely renamed. Jacob was renamed to Yisrael. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, that's just the deal. Peter, you know, uh, Simon was uh, renamed to, to Petras. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just a deal. The fellowship, the koinonia. So that's that's limiting the, the extent of the fellowship to the the suffering of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? The fellowship of ton and that's a genitive uh, genitive uh, plural article ton 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 all across the board you know uh, masculine uh, feminine and neuter ton 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 all the articles are ton 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 on that side of the pool sufferings in a plural genitive neuter uh, I should say genitive uh, yeah genitive neuter plural apathe uh, no, this is not, and this is just, this, this is, it would be, it wouldn't be this anyway because it would be epsilon, but no, this is not an uh, aris passive uh, participle. 
It wouldn't be Eita anyway. It would be Epsilon. So that's the dead giveaway anyway. You know what I'm saying? Pathe Maton. So that's just the deal. Sufferings. Pathema. Uh, Pathema. And that's the lexical form of him. Altu. And we saw that before. Of Jesus. The pronoun was invented to break up the monotony, okay, uh, or the boredom or the repetition of, of, of a single one. Now, there's nothing boring. Oh, Jesus' name. I can hear it all 917 times. And in fact, that's how many times it's found and recorded in the Greek New Testament. But, you know, linguistically, it was just it was just to break up the, monot the monotony. You know, Angelo uh, got up from bed. Uh, Angelo uh, took a bath. And Angelo... Uh, studied the Bible and Angelo prayed and Angelo went outside and Angelo uh, I don't know went to the store and Angelo came back and Angelo took another bath and Angelo went to sleep okay you understand what I'm saying too many Angelos that's just a deal <clears throat> being conformed and this is a participle present participle middle passive construction uh, su mar Fi samenas su ma okay su mar fi zamenas actually because they kill marker you know so I want to say I don't want to cheat uh, breaking this up okay the sigma over here is a nominative uh, sigma be careful with that because sometimes it's genitive in participles okay you understand what I'm saying then you got the omicron which is a pronunciation vowel that's what I call it or connecting vowel so that's the deal with the with the case ending okay so a participle has uh, has within it the a verbal the verbal system and a noun system it has the case ending and it has you know and it has uh, uh, and it has uh, verbal uh, constructions. Now the men here, so this is masculine, will be mena. That's the actual middle passive participial morphine. Morphine comes from the Greek word morphe, which means shape or form. Okay, and I even translates in, in that into nature when it has to do of, of the natures of Christ, you know, A and B or one or one and two. I should say A and B, one and two, not or. And then, um, and so that's just the deal. <clears throat> Mena, uh, men is here, it's really Mena, and that's a participial morphine in the middle passive side of the chart. And then you have the connecting vowel Omicron connecting it with the stem. And I, I believe this is a present stem because it has two moves here. And you usually see that in, in present uh, uh, ten stems, uh, uh, you know, constructions. Yeah, you usually see a double lambda. Uh, not, not usually, but I mean, sometimes you see a double lambda, sometimes, sometimes. You see uh, double sigma or double tau or whatever the case may be. And that's a good clue that that's a present tense stem. Okay. Which uh, the present tense stems are compared to everything else I'm trying to say. It's regular in and of itself. But compared to everything else, it's very irregular. And the nouns, in, according to the noun system, the nominative constructions are very irregular compared to other uh, constructions. I'll give you an example. I'm like hutas, very, very different from you know to do to 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 tan like that. You understand what I'm saying? From the hutas paradigm. So I'm just saying, sumar fi zamenas. Okay, and then the, the the present stem is the lexical form is below, so you could check that out. Su ma su mar fa o. <laughs> See. Sumar fao. So, which means, you understand what I'm saying? I conform, or whatever the case may be. Let, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, tagged by 4833. Let's look at the semantic pool. The definition, okay, is uh, to bring to the same form with conform 
You know what I'm saying? I want to say if this is first person, I said I. You know what I'm saying? So that's just a deal. Let me close that. So let's go on. It says over here to the and abito. Two is one of the keywords in the in the data, which is the, the case of interest, said Dana and Manti such a long time ago. Death. Thanato. Thanato. Uh, speak it like an Italian. Uh, speak Greek like an Italian would speak it. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Speak it like that. I can get away with it because I'm like 99% Spanish and 1% Italian. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. I don't know a lick of Italian. A lick. Nothing. I'm part Italian because of my uh, mother's uh, great grandfather. Uh, he was Italian from Sicily or something like that. But she, she didn't, she didn't teach us anything at all like that, you know. So that's just a to the to. She was Spanish. She was from Puerto, Puerto Rico. Oh my God! You know what I'm saying? Deaf. Tanato. Tanato, and was because she passed away in 2012. And his father say tomorrow, and uh, and uh, you know, uh, my father passed away when I was seventeen, way back in nineteen eighty three. She passed away when I was forty seven years old in two thousand and twelve. So I mean, two completely different deaths. He died in a fire, and she died while sleeping. Let's get back to this. That's why we need this hope. Toda, okay, death, to. Thanato, uh, Thanato. So that's just a deal. And no, this is not an imperative. That to is not an imperative uh, morphine. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So be careful with that. Even though this is a noun, Thanato. So that's just a deal. Of, of him, and that's how to again. So what do we learn in this? Um, well, we learned several things. We learned an infinitive, actually. And, and I think there's only one here, maybe. There's only one infinitive. But, you know, uh, the, uh, the book of Philippians is literally, like I said before in part one, peppered with infinitive constructions. Peppered with them. In chapter one, it's, it's all, there's, there's several. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Those are two infinitives right there. And they both have articles, I believe. So that's kind of helpful. To no. Ge no nai. Ge no nai. That's just the deal. Tu ge no nai. That's just it. So this is an infinitive and that's just a deal. Because you know what? He says over here, tu genonai. And the nai, we learn, is an infinitive morphine. That's how you can tell this is an infinitive. But you have a bag full of them. If it was just nai and I say, it would be kind of easy. What they have, sai, you have ain, and they have the passives and all this other stuff. I mean, so you just, you know, we, it's just not cut and dry like that. Like uh, to eat, to drink. That's, that's a piece of cake in English. But you have to learn different morphines or shapes. Okay, uh, that puts a particular uh, word functioning in a in a in a specific derrick in a, a specific way. You understand what I'm saying? Him out ton, and so uh, to know him out ton. So you have out ton, out two, out two, out two. You have a whole bunch of third person personal pronouns. You understand what I'm saying? Something like that. The uh, power. Do not mean well, this power comes from his resurrection, that's what makes us live a powerful life. It's not, it's not exousia, it's not authority, even though we have that. But this is power, this is this is this is dunami. That's all I'm saying. So that's just a deal. Now, let's look at this dunami, dunami over here. Do namis, okay, and this is a noun, dunamis. Okay, dunamis. Do not mean. This is an accusative feminine singular construction. You understand what I'm saying? Do not mean. Delta. 
or delta. Upsilon now they is called Upsilon with the acute marker pointing to seven o'clock. When you see that, you raise the pitch of uh, of of the syllable right then and there. Nu alpha mu, sometimes pronounced mu, nowadays pronounced me. Iota nu, you understand what I'm saying? Looks like a V, is not a V, there's no V in Greek. In modern Greek, there's a V. The beta, nowadays, is called vita, and it can be a V or a B-sounding letter, like in the Hebrew word bevakasha. And in bevakasha, which means you're welcome, the bet is acting, uh, is, is acting uh, uh, in two different ways. It's acting hard, the hardening dog is no doubt in it, in the belly of it. And then the um, and then the bait is is acting soft, okay, like a like a V sounding letter. You understand what I'm saying? I guess like a zav, uh, uh, abandon. You will not lo. You will not abandon my soul in shield. That's azav. Uh, spelled out, I believe, I am with an A class and Zion, which is a C letter in Hebrew with an A class, and then. Uh, Bit, but soft, I believe. Soft. Azov. Okay? You understand? Incidentally, not even, uh, not only abandon, he's not gonna, he wasn't gonna, gonna abandon him, but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't gonna allow his holy one, uh, Chasid. Holy one, Chasid. Okay? Equal to the Chi, you know, Ch. Okay? Chit. Chasid. The holy one to see, his holy one to see. Shachat, shachat, corruption or uh, decay is uh, diapathara in the Greek situation. And so that's just the deal. Check out Psalm 16, verse 10 in the Hebrew and Psalm 16, verse 10 or Psalm 15, verse 10, according to your Greek Septuagint app or, or your uh, 1851 uh, uh, Greek Septuagint, the one you can get on Amazon.com with a little sort of like a plus sign in the cover like that, you know. The power. This is this is this is this is this is might. This is power. Okay. This is this is what helps you live the Christian life. Is resurrection. As one of the seven things that the resurrection did. Okay, it could be more. And one of them was to give us power to live a holy life. Okay. The other one gave us hope. It gave us hope. Uh. You know, it, it justified us being delivered for our offenses and and and, and uh, um, raised for our justification. Verse twenty-five of chapter four of Romans. You understand what I'm saying? So the resurrection did like six or seven things that I uh, that I uh, chronicled in my earlier uh, study in this uh, bodily resurrection of Jesus series. You understand? So we learn uh, that uh, that the resurrection uh, of Jesus is here. Like I said, it took me time to find it in Philippians. I thought I wasn't going to find it. I was close to the end of the chapter of the book. Okay, so that's just the deal. It is not found and recorded um, in uh, in uh, chapter one. It's not found and recorded in chapter two. Okay, it's it's found in chapter three, in verse ten. So I just uh, so at least we found it. In some books of the New Testament, it's not recorded. I'm looking at every single verse that has to do with a clear teaching of Jesus' resurrection. Not, not, not the resurrection one or two that has to do with the just or the unjust, found and recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis of Apostolon, um, you know, chapter 24 and verse, uh, and verse, um, and verse 15, you know, Kappa, well, Kappa, Delta, something like that. In verse 15, you understand what I'm saying? Not that. I, 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 I'm not studying our resurrection and then, you know, uh, which is a resurrection, I believe, resurrection one, and then uh, the unjust uh, resurrection, a uh, resurrection two, the white throne, like that, you know, small and great, raised from the water, raised from the earth, from deeper from the earth. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a specific verse that has to do with Jesus' resurrection from the dead ones. That's what I'm talking about. And Anastasis is here. And let's look at it again. Alpha, nu, alpha. So that's one word. And then the other word is a compound word. Sigma, tau, alpha with the cube marker. Sigma, epsilon, omega, final sigma. Anastasis. 
stasios. Now the lexical form is just can help you remember it more is anastasis. There you go, anastasis. Alpha nu alpha, sigma tau alpha, sigma iota final sigma. And I said in the body of the study, particularly in part two, that the other word is egero. Now let's look at that real quick, okay? Because these two Greek words have to be remembered. We have to become experts in the bodily resurrection of Jesus as, as God can allow us, uh, will allow us to be, okay? Now the other, I mean, there's just so many occurrences, I could pick a whole bunch of them, but let me just uh, stay with one. Uh, well, let's look at John's Gospel. Okay, I, I could have brought you to the actually, actually the apostles, but I'm just going to bring you to one. Incidentally, the Acts of the Apostles uh, has Jesus being raised from the dead, okay, many times, but in particular, four times in chapter 13. We see it in chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, uh, 13, 17, 25, and 26, but you see it four times in that chapter, in chapter 13, uh, verses 30, 33, 34, and 37. And I didn't know any of this before I studied. Uh, I mean, I knew the Synoptic Gospels position, okay, of, um, you know, uh, positioning of, uh, of, you know, he is risen or, you know, like that. He has been raised or whatever the case may be, Aris Passive. I, I, but, but I didn't know the Greek word behind it. And I knew the number and where it was located. But the other verses in Acts and Romans and Revelation and First Corinthians, I had to learn along with you guys. Okay. Uh, praise God for that. Now, what am I doing here? Um, so, I'm looking at chapter 2 of John's Gospel. So, let me look at verse, uh, what? Verse 19. And let me look almost to the end. Not all the way to the end, but almost to the end. I'm just looking to look at the liquid future. I will raise up. Now, that's one... Except I will raise up. That's one. That's translating one Greek word. Again, okay, the English is you know the English translators, the committee, use one, two, three, four English words to to, to translate one Greek word. Okay, ege egero, egero, epsilon gamma epsilon rho omega, which is circumflex, and the first epsilon has a soft breathing mark. So it's not he, it's e. Like N, not hen. You understand? Now, this is tagged again by 1453. But the thing with this, and this is the only time we saw it as a liquid future in our study so far. We looked at, I mean, we looked at, I don't know if it's like 50 verses. I, I, it's probably more, 50, 60, 70 verses. I don't know. I didn't count them all. Um, has to be at least 50, 60 that, that we saw so far. I mean, you know, it's, it's quite a bit. This is the only liquid future. I'm not saying it's the only liquid future in the New Testament. It has to do with the resurrection of Jesus. But so far, this is the only time that I saw it. And liquid future is uh, the future tense. Um, it's the future tense. And um, the, the, the future is formed by sigma. But when it's a liquid future, now liquids in, Greeks are, in, in Greek, I should say rather, is uh, you know contain uh, consists of four letters, rho, mu, nu, and lambda. Okay, uh, a uh, R, M, N, L sounding uh, uh, letters or letter or whatever. Forgetting my English in the Philippines is. Just it's just so tell me that's just happen. It happens, guys. I will raise up. <laughs> that's a great P. Sometimes the Hebrew pay. You understand what I'm saying? I will raise it. I will raise what? It up. The it is very important. It is a liquid future again is formed by epsilon and sigma, but the epsilon and sigma drops off uh, after the liquid. That's the problem. It's just like a trap door. The epsilon drops off and the intervocalic sigma. Okay, drop, uh, dropped off as well. Okay, so the epsilon and sigma drops uh, off after um, the um, rho. That's why it's called a liquid future. You can't see the transformative. You just you just know it's there because of the stem and because of uh, the rho 
and because of the context and because of everything else. You understand what I'm saying? I will raise up. I will raise what up? I will raise it up. The Alton here is absolutely essential. It's key. It's the capstone of Christianity. Without it, you all scrumbles. The it's there's a one-to-one correspondence between the it that Jesus Jesus commanded the Jewish uh, unbelievers to destroy. This is an imperative, and the it that he will raise up in the future. There's a one-to-one correspondence. It's the same thing. Now he wasn't saying destroy that temple, so they should have been confused. What's the confusion? He didn't say destroy that temple. He said destroy that temple, which was very close to him, I understand. But it wasn't closest to the body. His body was closest close to him, to his soul, than the, than the temple of Jerusalem was. He just came out of the temple. You understand what I'm saying? Drew some cards and whipped, whipped, whipped everybody out of there. You understand what I'm saying? But yet, he didn't say destroy that temple. A canon or a canos, you understand what I'm saying? He didn't use a far demonstrative, he used a near demonstrative. Hutas or Tutan, I believe it's Tutan. Isn't it Tutan though? Let me see the construction over here. Let me refresh my mind. Uh, I might have skipped it. This is uh, Tutan, it's in the case of the case from Hutas. You understand what I'm saying? Hutas, uh, Tutu, Tutu, Tutan, and all of that stuff. You understand what I'm saying? This, he didn't say that. He said they shouldn't have been confused. What's the confusion? He didn't say destroy that temple over there. He's saying destroy this temple over here. The temple that's near to me. Not the temple that's far from me. You know what I'm saying? An imperative. You destroy this temple. Destroy it. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. Now, what's the deal? If it was the temple of Jerusalem, what's the big deal? I mean, he could have, he could have, he could have just thought it into existence if they destroyed it. He could have just thought it into existence. He need to be like Nehemiah, get some petitions or whatever the case may be to build it up. Uh, uh-uh. he, I mean, you know, he cursed the fig tree and it, and it withered immediately. Now, I say that if he wanted to, he could have erected the temple in less than three in three days and three nights. He could have just thought it into existence right there. If he wanted to. I'm just saying. He did the reverse of the fig tree. Why not do the opposite to the temple if he could have? Well, it's just nothing to Jesus. It's just, it's just, a, just to think it into existence. Or just to rebuild it like that. Because of the great faith that he had. You understand what I'm saying? In his father God. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. Well, that's just the deal. So that's it. This angel Kenyon is given glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, Necron, with a kappa, but of the living. And it means that Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time Jesus said those words. This hot chocolate is good. This is cold, but it's good. It's not hot anymore. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up, and please leave your comments on the screen. Please check out the other uh, videos that have to do with uh, Somatica Anastasis Du Yesu Christu Kuryu Hemon, the bodily Somatica, Somatica, the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There are several verses. There's nothing like it on YouTube. Okay, Anastasis series. You're not gonna find it. You're gonna find it here. Thank God. So study it and share uh, what you learn uh, with your friends. And if you're involved in a the, in the, in the cult or sect or uh, phony religion, okay, that doesn't believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus, well, first of all, if there's nothing wrong with you physically, you must believe um, in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Okay? I have a special child. She's covered by special grace, but not everybody is. If you're able to believe and you don't believe and you refuse, well, you won't be saved. You have to believe in your heart. Greek word cardia, that God has raised him from the dead. If you don't, you're not going to be saved. That's just all there is to it. I'm giving you a message. You will not be saved. You'll be, you'll be experiencing the wrath of God, okay, throughout all the eons of time. Unquenchable fire, recorded in Luke chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3. That's just all there is to it. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. 
For our God is love, but he's also a consuming fire. So preach and teach this to your friends, your loved ones, your co-workers, and that's just the deal. Amen?